The Supreme Court will hear an unprecedented six hours of oral arguments on the constitutionality of Obamacare. We asked Senator Lee what is really at stake in these hearings. He provides his analysis of the constitutional questions being raised by these cases and predicts the outcome. There are three issues before the court in the case dealing with the Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare. Uh, the first issue deals with what is referred to as the Anti-Injunction Act. Uh, the second issue deals with the constitutionality of the individual mandate, that is Congress telling individual citizens that they must purchase health insurance under penalty of federal law. And the third issue relates to severability, which is uh, if you assume that the individual mandate is held unconstitutional by the Supreme Court, is that severable? Can it be severed out of the rest of the statute? And can the rest of the statute uh, remain in effect as good law? Uh, so let me describe each one of those. The Anti-Injunction Act issue deals with uh, a federal law that says that you can't challenge a tax before it has taken effect, before its effects are being felt and before citizens are actually paying the tax. The federal government, through the Solicitor General's office, uh, which is defending the Affordable Care Act before the Supreme Court, has argued that the individual mandate should be reviewed for legal constitutional purposes as a tax uh, uh, because of the fact that there, the penalty associated for noncompliance with the individual mandate is in the Solicitor, General, uh, in the Solicitor General's uh, view a tax and, and therefore can't be challenged yet because it hasn't yet kicked in. And until people are actually paying it, if it is a tax under the Anti-Injunction Act, the courts can't address the issue. It's not yet ripe. It's not yet proper for resolution by the courts. I personally disagree with the Solicitor General's argument that this is a tax. And I, uh, a tax. Uh, I don't think it is a tax, and I therefore believe that the Anti-Injunction Act will not kick in to say that this case shouldn't yet be decided by the courts. Uh, the, the second issue that I described, which is the main issue uh, in, in this case, involves the constitutionality of the individual mandate, the requirement in the Affordable Care Act that every American purchase health insurance, health ins insurance uh, of the sort that Congress has said is sufficient within the Affordable Care Act. Uh, the argument there is that Congress has never before exercised the authority to tell Americans that they must purchase a specific product that they may or may not want to buy and uh, uh, that this exceeds Congress's power under the Commerce Clause. Uh, Congress is a legislative body with limited power. Most of its powers are outlined in Article I, Section 8 of the Constitution. Here, Congress has said that it's relied on the Commerce Clause, Clause 3 of Article I, Section 8, to enact this provision to require all Americans to buy health insurance. And uh, the, the principal argument against the individual mandate has been that Congress has never exercised this power before. This far exceeds anything that uh, a legislative body possessing only limited power should be able to do. And the fact that Congress has power to regulate commerce between the several states and with foreign nations and with the Indian tribes does not and cannot be fairly interpreted to mean that Congress can tell individual American citizens that they must purchase a particular product. I tend to agree with that argument and tend, therefore, to believe that the Supreme Court um, could, should, and I hope will uh, find that it's unconstitutional. The third issue uh, relates to what happens to the rest of the Affordable Care Act in the event that the individual mandate provision is deemed unconstitutional. So this analysis, this severability analysis as it's known, focuses on whether or not the, the law can function or was intended to be able to function, was written in such a way as to be able to function, even without this particular provision intact. Uh, there is a strong argument, one that I find persuasive, that says that, uh, first of all, Congress didn't provide that the rest of the act could remain in, in place, intact, without the severability, uh, uh, without the individual mandate in place. Um, and the fact that as a practical matter, the regulatory scheme envisioned by the Affordable Care Act can't really survive 
without the individual mandate in place. I tend to think that if the court finds the individual mandate unconstitutional, the, the court is likely to conclude that the individual mandate is not severable from the, from the rest of the legislation. If the Supreme Court, in fact, rules on the question of the Affordable Care Act's uh, constitutionality, or the, the specifically the constitutionality of the individual mandate within the Affordable Care Act, which I predict it will do, this will be a landmark decision, uh, a, a decision of very historic proportions, regardless of which way it goes. Uh, now, if the court concluded that the individual mandate is, in fact, constitutional, that it's within Congress's power under the Commerce Clause to tell uh, the American people that they must purchase a particular product, in this instance, a specific kind of health insurance, uh, that's really significant. That's the first time uh, Congress has ever tried to do that. And it's, it's not clear to me that the existing case law um, e even provides a valid justification for doing that. Uh, so if the Supreme Court were to conclude that this is constitutional, it would open the door for Congress to do all sorts of things, to mandate the purchase of other products, goods or services or both, uh, by the American people. And that would be uh, a watershed event in American history, particularly given that the founding generation understood the powers of the federal government under the Constitution to be few and defined, while those reserved to the states were numerous and indefinite. This would have a tendency to reverse that, even more than that's already been reversed uh, uh, by, by the Supreme Court's jurisprudence since the late 1930s, which has significantly expanded what Congress may do uh, without judicial interference under the Commerce Clause. The constitutional challenge to the Affordable Care Act's individual mandate is presented as what's known as a facial challenge to the statute, meaning they're, they're, they're challenging this provision in its entirety, not as applied to specific people. They're just saying the whole thing is unconstitutional because it falls outside of Congress's limited enumerated powers. Uh, specifically, it's beyond Congress's power under the Commerce Clause to regulate interstate commerce. Uh, so in that kind of a challenge, you do typically expect the court to give a binary answer. It either is constitutional or it isn't. You don't expect to see a lot of nuance with respect to uh, uh, an opinion saying, for example, this may be constitutional as to these people but not as to others. But you're, the, the, the fact that the fact that the court is likely to give a, a, a yes or a no answer in respect uh, w with regard to that question doesn't mean that there are not other possibilities. For instance, the court um, uh, could decide, if the court were to decide that the case isn't ripe uh, because they decide that it's a tax or at least there is a close question as to whether it's a tax, uh, perhaps the court could say that the entire case isn't ripe for judicial analysis, that uh, we have to wait until this penalty provision kicks in. And as I mentioned earlier, I don't think it will reach that conclusion because I don't think the penalty attached to noncompliance with the individual mandate is a tax. I, th I think uh, the, it is not a tax and the challenge in any event is not to the penalty, it is to the mandate itself. So I don't think they're likely to do that. I think in this case it is most likely that we get a binary answer. It either is constitutional or it's not. I, I tend to think that uh, there are four justices who, based on their previous rulings, their uh, opinions in other cases, are likely to say that the individual mandate is unconstitutional. A and uh, I, I think Ju uh, Chief Justice Roberts, uh, uh, along with uh, Justice Scalia, Justice Thomas and Justice Alito are the most likely to reach that conclusion. I think it is equally likely that Justices Ginsburg and Breyer and Kagan and Sotomayor uh, will probably reach the opposite conclusion. Um, that would mean that this case, if that prediction is correct, um, then this case is likely to be decided uh, based on a five to four vote, with the fifth vote being provided by Justice Anthony Kennedy. I personally read Justice Kennedy's opinions in this area in the realm of structural federalism 
uh, as suggesting that he is more likely to break with the conservatives on the court uh, and conclude that the individual mandate is unconstitutional. This is, of course, very difficult to predict, but that is my own subjective assessment. I think it's important for the American people to think about the fact that if Congress has the power to do this, that is, if Congress has the power to tell the American people that they must purchase a particular product, here a specific kind of health insurance, there are very few things that it lacks the power to do. If there is one thing that the founding generation understood and agreed upon, it was that there are dangers inherent in having a large, powerful national government with no effective limits on its authority. And that's exactly why they wrote the Constitution the way that they did. And that's exactly why uh, James Madison, uh, in advising the various states to ratify the Constitution, uh, said that the powers given to the federal government are few and defined, and those reserved to the states are numerous and indefinite. Because he, like his contemporaries uh, at the time, understood well that there is great danger in giving too much power to a national legislative body. And so it's important for Americans to realize what that means, that there are very few things that Congress cannot do if it has the power to do what it did here.